Hello, and welcome to the fourth episode of the 2-Bit Game Club's Let's Play of Banjo-Kazooie. I'm your host, Liam Gallagher. You can find 2-Bit Game Club on the web at theliamgallagher.com slash 2-Bit Game Club. We tweet at 2-Bit Game Club, and we're on Facebook and Twitch and How Long to Beat and all those other services at 2-Bit uh, Game Club. So this is our fourth episode of the uh, Banjo-Kazooie playthrough. It's our game of the month this month. If you don't know about the 2-Bit Game Club, we are a group of gamers that, and game designers and other game art makers that play through games together once a month um, in order to join in a dialogue about the good things and the bad things of those games and uh, what we can learn from them in making games in the future. So, uh, Bandage Kazooie is for the uh, N64 that old Nintendo thing with um, a uh, controller that's shaped like an M. Um, the first controller with like an analog stick, as far as I can understand, as far as I remember. And uh, it's an example of early <coughs> full 3D games. So there's lots of interesting things that we've been talking about through the playthrough, about the use of simple aesthetics, about um, the accessing even straightforward games as um, uh, as a text, uh, so that being like a a volume of work worthy of interpretation and uh, inside reading, uh, you know, beyond just taking things at absolute face value. Uh, and now uh, we are here in Clanker's Cavern. It's a cavern. It's got a clanker in it. Clanker is a big shark slash trash compactor. Uh, which we're going to go visit. So off screen, I played a little bit of this level and ended up getting very super duper lost in it. Um, in a segment deemed not interesting enough for uh, the viewers. So... I'll point out where some of the old Jiggies were. Um, if you're just joining the show now, um, Jiggies are the collectible element sort of akin to superstars in Mario 64. Uh, so there was one up there, and basically you got there by doing all this platform, which looks like I'm going to have to do anyways in order to get those um, music notes because we need them to unlock other worlds later in the game. So these guys will go, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, one of the things that I think that this game does well uh, in its early 3D attempts I bound, bound through there? No. Um, is that it goes, it's low texture. It's necessarily low, you know, uh, texture resolution, texture depth, whatever the arts term for it is. I'm at a bit of a handicap in this area because I'm a sound and music guy and not a, um, a an art guy. But, um, I mean, the eye is the real judge here. It's plain to see that, oh, right, there's a Jinjo. So it's good that we came up here. We need those. Jinjo. Um... Right, but the effectiveness of those choices are pretty plain to see. Because uh, even though you have, uh, oh no, quite frankly, some pretty ugly textures going on. Like, look at the thing in the foreground. Well, look at the whole screen, really. Uh, it's one just, like, sort of blotchy, muddy clump. But when you take a larger look at the world around you, it's actually pretty vivid and bright and colorful. And so, um,. It gives you a, a sense of being, you know, like a, an interesting and wonderful place. Um, so even though um, they have the issue of dealing with a low uh, texture rate, texture quality, um, they're able in the aggregate to say something about this charming world. Whereas, say, if you take a look at um, the last game that we played, uh, Deus Ex, and you can find the uh, discussion that me and Brooke uh, my co-host had about that game on our podcast uh, which is on iTunes and whatnot um, and also he did a Let's Play video series on the game um, the game is not that good looking which is to say it's bad looking because they went for 
a realistic look in an era um, where it wasn't really possible in 3D. So Deus Ex was put out in the year... Oh yeah! Ah! This truth not hurt! That's great. So, sort of bird bear dentistry. Um, so I believe this game is 98 or 99. Um, but, uh, so Deus Ex is 2000. It's a PC game. Uh, Mambo. Uh, camera, please. I do a lot of complaining about the camera uh, in this. Um, I think it's traditional for me in these types of games, and I think for a lot of people to get killed by the camera. Anyhow, so this game is using less tech because it's for the N64 uh, and not the, the PC, not the Unreal Engine that Deus Ex is built in. Um, but uh, a lot of the same challenges because it's a full 3D uh, environmental game. Um, but I think this game succeeds where Deus Ex fails um, because by going with large, cartoony, colorful gestures instead of trying to actually like realistically render the outside world um the game hits closer to its aesthetic mark and now i mean obviously you can say well um the, not every game wants to be cartoony and what if you want to make a game that looks uh realistic um in this time period what do you do and that is a very good question for a graphic artist more skilled than myself um, so unfortunately I can't necessarily talk about where, how to fix the shortcomings of those games, but I can definitely tell you that even though, you know, the tech for this game is lower, it's a better looking game, uh, and so kudos must be given to the fabulous designers of, uh, Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. All right, so we're going through the inside of Planker's Rest of the E-Body. So um, on the stream, we've got people talking about the uh, juxtaposition between the content of the game, like what Banjo and Kazooie are doing and my analysis of it, which is kind of funny. Uh, but oh boy, if you think that you should listen to episode three of the Let's Play, where I talk about the viability of Banjo Kazooie as a text and the statement on the feminine form in uh, popular media uh, and to what extent uh, criticism of these types of work is needed or valuable and if it's to be productive how it ought to be delivered so oh man uh, yeah I would definitely say that as a, as a as a host and as a video gamer and just as a person in general um, I have a, a manner about me which uh, makes things hard to enjoy uh, <laughs> but you know it comes I think it comes down to um, if there's lots there's lots of streams there's lots of podcasts there's lots of gaming websites you could go to to just watch um, a man kill another man with a handgun you know like shoot people in the face the podcast uh, and I don't know if we need any more of uh, that um, I'm not saying that those are the two choices you got. You either have to listen to me prattle on about um, uh, the conceptual elements of aesthetic design or shoot a man in the face with a handgun. Um, but, you know, I think you gotta, you gotta buy into who you are. Here at 2 Game Club, we're really interested in uh, game design and what makes games work and why this camera is impossible. Oh, the camera. Um, <laughs> me and my in-pain camera. Um, so that that's the show, right? So if you're interested in game design, you're interested in learning to know why games work, this is the place for you. So, yeah. Obviously, the person who left that com the comment is actually a friend of mine. Um, uh, an attendee of the last live event in uh, Toronto. For those of you who don't know, I'm based out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, World, North America, uh, Milky Way Galaxy. Um, aw man, it's a Jiggy. Aw, Jiggy. Bump, bump. Um, and as well as doing a podcast and live streams and, 
uh, Let's Plays and whatnot. We also um, do a live discussion group in Meat Space in Toronto, uh, hosted by a wonderful venue called Electric Perfume. So check them out on the web if you have an opportunity, electricperfume.com, because they do a lot of really cool multimedia art slash video game experiments things. And they also run lots of workshops. It's They're very awesome. And they've been very kind to uh, support us. So, yeah. Uh, only thankfulness. Oh, that camera. Oh. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, come on. I th so if, if I... I'm not sure if I just caught that, but I think that in the middle, yeah. Okay, so there's a water break, which we're gonna make use of thoroughly for the rest of this show, uh, for the rest of this game. So if you're diving underwater and you're in the middle of one, oh, camera, you're in the middle of one of Kazooie's strokes, if you, so Kazooie's fast swim like that is the B button. If you press A anytime in the middle of a stroke, it's a, acts as like a water break. Um, because one of the things that's frustrating about swimming in this game is the momentum because you press one unit of of bird swimming <laughs> and then uh, you coast past whatever you're trying to hit um, and then the rest is sadness and, uh, and prolonged exposure to horrible swimming mechanics. Um, which uh, the FDA has proven causes cancer. Uh, I can say that because we don't have an FDA in Canada. Um, oh, up I go. And uh, so that's going to help. That, because one of the things that, oh no, Liam, oh no. One of the things, <laughs> jump ball. One of the things that makes swimming so frustrating in games is the slipperiness of the control, right? So you're used to running around and platforming and being, things being grippy and the action feeling tight, and then all of a sudden you get into um, uh, these uh, aquatic environments and you slip and slide around like you've been greased. Um, and the lack of traction uh, can be fine in terms of like how you might design a game. Um, you know, obviously there's lots of fun, slippery, uh, platformy type games. Uh, like, oh, ow! One that comes to mind is uh, Sanic the Herger. Um, of course, as, as he rolls around in speed sound, um, there a lot of, there's a lot of momentum and a lot of inertia. Uh, and that's part of what makes that game feel fast. And exciting, but when in a game like this that requires a lot of precision platforming, when you go from precision platforming to um, sliding around and experiencing uh, true anger for the first time in your life, um, yeah, see, that was weird. To me, there was no indication that I hadn't hit that with eggs, but here we are. We're eggies. Um, okay, so she's an egg. Bump it up, 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 up. Oh man, we got all ten. Amazing. Take a bow, banjo. Um, so we just have to get these these lovely music notes. I love beam eights, beam eights in the house. Um, I don't remember the last time anybody said in the house. Um, oh no. <laughs> um, except for me, Liam in the house. Um, okay, I'm not gonna say that again. <clears throat> so, um, what was I even talking about? Slipperiness of platforming, water level. Yeah, like the water temple. Sweet lord. Um, the new Zelda game though, Breath of the Wild. Ooh boy, that's a pretty looking thing. Um, just to make sure I date this so it's not evergreen. This is being recorded in uh, 2016 during uh, E3 2016. The old EEE. -E -E. um, so we did get everything over there. Thank thank heavens they gave you the uh, option to use the first person camera. Even if just briefly. I think in general, I mean, the camera moves in this are obviously 
very lovingly placed in the game. Somebody thought about how you were going to accomplish all these tasks and planned camera moves to try to help you. Um, someone at rare, oh, someone at rare does love you and care about how you feel. So that is good news. Um, I. I think the game would have been an absolutely unmitigated disaster had the camera not been in some way. I mean, I'm sure you could say that about any game. I don't know that any game with an unoptimized anything that's like, uh, excels on account of it, uh, except for in those cases where you have um, a, a fortunate, happy little mistakes, right? Like Bob Ross and his painting. Sometimes, oh cool, did you know you can do that? Sometimes in like creating a 3D environment or the systems that allow you to interact with it, you end up with happy little mistakes that you just keep in. But I think that's almost in every creative field, right? Which makes it possible for me to draw that example from Bob Ross. Okay, so there's a bunch of uh, things I've been calling 80s, eighth note, Team together in the middle of Clanker. Ugh. So bad. <laughs> Platforming. <gasps> oh. Please forgive me to a game club. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> if I had to try to do that four times. Okay. What's over here? I have like uh, natural training from playing. Oh no. I ruined it. I ruined it. <laughs> Uh, I have training from Metroid games and whatnot, where any time it presents me with a path, I have to go in the opposite direction, because I assume that, you know, that's where the uh, infinite ammo cheat is being held. Um, okay. Uh, bump. So, um, Clanker's doing pretty good. I'm kind of grossed out by this aesthetic of being in, like, because he's, like, metal, but Clanker, the, sh the garbage disposal grinder, Shark is also, like, meaty and, like, also, like, bloody and, like, looks inflamed and stuff. I've not actually played through uh, this game in full ever before. Like, many games from the 64-bit uh, era, I was of an age where, um... My, I played 20 minutes at a time uh, at friends' houses on the weekends or after schools um, and never actually really beat the game because uh, I didn't own this one. You know, these were in the days where I think I had four or five games for the uh, uh, N64, which I had to pay for all myself, um, which I was extremely proud of then. And I guess it was no small accomplishment as a child. Um, but today it looks kind of hilarious, um, just because of how inexpensive video games, like, are compared to, like, a household budget. Anyhow, that's some adult talk. Um, it's interesting how the ledge there forces you down. I wonder if that's a general rule about, um, those declining slopes above you and water, or if that's specifically put in there. These are the important questions, guys. All right, did we miss? I think there might be, yeah, there's a few 80s up there. Um, I don't know if 80s are actually the uh, real name for the Bean Dates note collectible in this game, but that's what I've been calling them. Okay, so here we're going, here we're going. Um, shock jump. Get up there. So it's interesting in those situations where I couldn't actually see where I was going, but you just sort of have to use your, like, platform senses to guess. Oh, the camera. <laughs> so, um, we have a camera death count going in this. So far, we're only at one. Um, but yeah, that those are the number of times where, uh, because of the way a camera uh, swings wildly or hides the character or an enemy, you end up uh, losing a life. Uh, 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 which is the um, 
I think, the greatest game design sin of this era. Uh, but I like little jumpy mechanics like this. Yeah, like, see, this camera move is clearly planned, right? So, I mean, all of them are. Um, but you can tell here, okay, there's no more jumping. They're expecting you to move out of the way and down enough with enough space to clear this guy, which we're going to kill because I can net gain myself one golden feather. And in, uh, Fever. Fever. And in, um, collect a -thon games like this. You need your resources. Okay. So, um, we've got to try going back into Clanker because I screwed it up. Alright, let's do this. Um, yeah, so I'm not 100% clearing this game. So if at some point I have a hideous glut of eight notes, um, I will stop collecting them. Um, because, uh, the level of OCD, and no offense to people with OCD, uh, but the level of OCD required, um, in order to... Interesting, I guess that wing platform isn't there unless you drop down from the top. Hmm. Um, unless I'm not remembering that accurately. But the amount of OCD you need in order to 100% clear a game like this is titanic. Um, I know OCD people, it's not your fault. Um, it's just how it goes. I'm sorry. Uh, I do not have the tenacity. Uh, and I think it's also contrary to the... Right, I've already done this. Uh, but let's do it again because I need the 80s. Because I don't think I can get through this just on wit alone. Or maybe I can. There's a rhythm to it, right? Because of the, the circular. Oh! I'm so smart. There's a rhythm to it. Um, there is, though. By uh, the way that they're separated. I'm just not skill enough, skilled enough. Uh, in order to actually do it. Okay, there was a Jiggy there. That's where we learned the invincibility ability. Invincibility that we learned from uh, bottles, goggles. The Kazooie insults that little mole so many times, I have a hard time keeping track of what his name is. So yeah, they... It's interesting that they present you a scenario that's technically not impossible to beat uh, without the new ability. Um, so what's there tutorial wise is it saying to the ambitious player here's an opportunity to do this without the invincibility and if you pull it off you're going to feel great um, and then to the player who's willing to try but not necessarily stick to it to have that like you know okay fine moment <laughs> right like I get it you know, I've learned my lesson, and that's a win. And then the other scenario is um, a player sees it and says, yeah, to hell with this. I'm just using the power. Um, and then in, in all cases, you get your tutorial done uh, because people learn how to make use of the ability. Um, and get the puzzle piece, get the reward successfully, and then move on. But you have a variable number of, of ways to approach the issue that rewards different players, rather than forcing them to do it a given way. Oh no, so uh, I was here before, and these are mutant crabs um, with horrible swollen eyes. Um, so here we're learning um, important environmental lessons, uh, which is to say that uh, carcinogenic and radioactive materials that alter the DNA of living creatures probably aren't the best thing to just leave in an ecosystem. Um, I don't know how obvious that was <laughs> for, without Banjo-Kazooie, but here we are. Uh, and so there was Jiggy up here. When you kill all the horrible crab creatures, um, you get their jiggy, and it's up on this platform, which I'm not going to bother getting up onto. Ooh, almost missed an 80. That would have been bad. Here we go. 
yeah, so it's a beautiful day in Kazooie Town. Um, we have to go down now. Um, so, these water environments, any, everyone hates them, I think. Does anyone love the water levels? If you love the water levels, can you please write in? Uh, you can leave a comment on any of the bizarre nonsense. We, oh, Campbell, please. Uh, there we are. Um, so, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so, like, on Facebook, that'd be fine. You can tweet us or send us an email at 2 at gmail.com. Whatever. Um, but honestly, um, it almost, I'm, my sense is that I feel like a bit of a hack. Uh, taking a piss on, um, that's kind of gross, uh, uh, criticizing the water levels uh, for being water levels. Seems like it's an easy and somewhat trite. Uh, see, there's my water break. Yay! Um, complaint to have about these 3D games. So if you're a person who legitimately really likes the water levels, um, please write in and tell me why. Uh, not as a challenge, like as in like what's so wrong with you. But uh, I would like to hear that perspective. Um, and we'll thank you on air. Or not, unless you want to stay anonymous. We've had a good track record for anonymous contributions. Um, I have some friends who are I just graduated from the University of Toronto from a uh, music degree. So I'm, uh, I'm certified to music. I can make noises in the right order. Um, and through that community I've met people in other faculties such as medicine so then when we were talking about Deus Ex uh, 2000 for the PC and I took some off the record information about the uh, biomedical engineering uh, feat that is uh, nano augmentation and the possibilities of it and what we're about to see uh, like what kind of augmentations will we see first um, so I think this is the one with the jiggy in it yeah so we don't need to go there there was a jiggy down this path and the whole name of the game was uh, go get it without drowning and running out of your air supply but uh, I've already done it so we're not gonna do it again um, yeah so just so it's clear um, we're missing a little bit of my playthrough of this level um, I did it and then got lost and stuck and so skipped over it um, yeah and so even though that stuff did not make it into the podcast or whatnot it definitely informed the discussion and so anytime you have an expertise in an area um, or have an answer to one of these open-ended questions that sometimes I field um, like why is what 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 like what what 8880s um, why and I'm an idiot, and you're like, you're an idiot. Uh, please let me know, because we here at the Tuba Game Club are actually trying to learn. This isn't a project to massage my ego. Where is that fish? Um, I want to know the answers to these things. Uh, and oftentimes, the uh, developers of the games are not easily on hand to answer them. Um, because they're involved making other games and also have full lives and are real people. Um, so there was another uh, uh, jiggy you could get by f swimming through that keyhole three times. Um, and that raised clanker uh, up like um, a couple feet so that he could breathe the relatively fresh air. Uh, in Clanker's cavern. Okay, so we're missing one. Oh, am I gonna make it? If I don't make it, I'm gonna be so angry at myself for doing this. Go! Ba 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 I don't know where the other um, 80s are. I don't know. Someone who knows this game better is screaming at me right now. But this is how it's going to be. I think we're going to bail on this level. 
we got our 10, 10 jiggies. We've got enough um, 80s to, oh no, to get through the winter. I think it's time that we bail. Okay, we're doing it. Yeah, like these weird, this is gross to me. <laughs> In the belly of the whale, Jonah, right? That's from the Bible. Um, yeah, the Bible ripped that off of uh, Orchard of Time. Um, the water pendant or whatnot. Yeah, I think we're done with this level, which means that we might as well be done with this episode of the live stream and of the Let's Play. So, I have been your uh, host, Liam Gallagher, for the 2-Bit Game Club. You can find us on the web at 2-Bit uh, Game Club. That's on Twitter or slash 2-Bit Game Club on Facebook or on Twitch or what have you. Um, you can find us at my website at theliamgallagher.com slash 2-Bit Game Club. Uh, as well as on YouTube where these videos will get hosted so please join in the commentary and join in um, listening to the podcast and if you're in Toronto join in the live discussion group uh, because your voices improve the quality of this program not only for you and for me but for uh, other people who want to learn about game design and what goes into making a cool and interesting game as well as just people who are interested in uh, the history in the background behind these things. So, uh, without further ado, I've been your host, Liam Gallagher. Thanks so much.